Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today I'm going to look in on my DIY stacked bin. I haven't looked in on this, I don't even know. Honestly, it's been over a month. So let's have a, a little peek at this and see what's going on. So I gave them some leaves last time, and it looks like they're working on it. This is a mix of the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, and the blue worms. So it looks like there's a fair amount of worms throughout. The, the moisture right down at the bottom is pretty good. The top is a little bit dry, but they have some place to go, so that's okay. But as I kind of dig down flat against the bottom, it looks like pure castings. So they certainly have been making, you know, a good living off of the the leaves. Wasn't sure if if that would work or not, but here we are. And mostly leaves and that is a potato. Weird. It's a weird texture for a potato. right there at the bottom. And if you've been watching any of my other videos, you know I've been having, I don't know if trouble's the right word, but I've been having what I consider to be an excess of springtails. I'm not seeing that in this bin at all. Just seeing worms. Let me find that potato again. See if there's any weirdness on that. Looks like some mites. What is this? Probably a mango pit. So it's just now starting to open up. Let's see if anybody's home. Yep. Right. Maybe. Am I wrong? I don't know. Oh no. I thought that was a worm, but it was just kind of like squishiness. All right, well, we'll just stuff it back in there and they'll get around to it. All right, so nothing spectacular in the way of a worm ball in here. But also, luckily, no pests and the worms look like they are in good shape. Moisture looks good. So let me move over this top lid and uh, let's look and see what's below it. I don't know if you can tell, but that is a worm ball. Let me get that. That is a good amount of worms. So this is just the paper bedding down here. Kind of scrounging around here to see if there's any food in particular I can see other than the bedding. Just just the paper bedding. And they're all through it. It's almost like there is something that dripped down from below that they were super interested in. To see like big huge clusters of them like this. I do make the pre-aged bedding. I will put a link to my video about that up here. So there is a fair amount of microbes in here for them to feed on. But right now I'm just kind of fluffing up the that paper bedding because you can see where it's kind of gotten, I wouldn't say anaerobic, but it's definitely not in such a condition that the worms can get to it. So, get them all fluffed up. Let's see what's down in the next level. Okay. The good thing about the, the narrow or the not very deep bins is that they're not very heavy. My first experience doing this, I made myself... Um, a three stack of really deep bins and it was so ridiculously heavy. 
horrible. I smell onion. See some onion skins. That's coming along nicely with the biodegradable bag. Looks like they're making some nice castings out of this paper bedding. I don't know if you overall notice, but the the castings do seem to be lighter, quite a bit lighter from paper bedding to uh, leaf bedding. So here's just a compare and contrast in the colors between um, the bedding that is made almost exclusively with paper and that of leaves outside. I don't know if that indicates a nutrient difference, but definitely you can tell which castings came from mostly paper and what ones came from the leaf bedding. Okay, everything smells decent in here. Of course, the onion's a little funky, but that is to be expected. The worms aren't bothered by it at all. So I will just bury these lovely little compostable bags in there again and I will reassemble and I'm gonna feed the top today so flatten that out put that on top and I have some something that I forgot about um, which only worm people would be happy about finding. Um, there's a little egg right there on my finger. I had put a watermelon in a kitty litter bucket with some leaves on top of it so that it didn't get uh, gnats and whatever for the, <laughs> for the worms. Well, that's been a couple, two or three months now. Um, yeah, it's ugly. <laughs> I dumped it out into a mortar tray and I was like, oh, got a decent strong stomach, but that's, that's ugly. But we're going to feed them that today. So, as you can tell, the microbes have done already quite a bit of the work. So, the worms are not going to have to wait long to slurp up all this fabulousness kind of, you know, in air quotes there. Yep, still bare handing it. Then I'm going to put some leaves on top. Kind of cover that up because this is the top row. Or the top of that. I think I'm going to get some more leaves from my bin. Hold on. Okay. So, good healthy dose of shredded leaves on top of that watermelon because for the same reason <laughs> I don't want to attract any bugs to it. So that's it for the DIY uh, stack bin. You kind of a, uh, I don't know if I can get the light to look at it here, but there it is. Haven't done an update in a good long time. They've got a good amount of watermelon to mess with. That should take them through the next couple of weeks. All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already a member of my worm family, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know when I'm doing something, hit the little bell icon. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.